Okay, it's a great pleasure for me to be in Vancouver, to be back in Canada. Now I work with the LTA, and my main role is to be doubles leader, both for the male and female uh, players. And here I'm with uh, Colin Fleming and Ken Skupski. They are a fourth seed, and I'm here mostly to help them to break the 100. I started to work with them uh, last fall. Uh, they were starting a partnership, and Colin was starting to play after two years of university, so he had no points. So they had a tremendous year, winning, I don't know, seven future three, four challengers. And we're here to look to hopefully win uh, the tournament here in Vancouver, which probably will be the one that will help them to move in the top 100. So really looking forward. And also I help a singles player called Alex Bogdanovich, very talented lefty, uh, who has a good chance to do well also here. Yeah, so the, the first mandate, I had two major mandates. It was to be performance manager, which is to help the clubs who do high performance development, to go visit them and assist them. And as my function required me to be more on the road than it was planned, Larry Jovich took uh, over most of the clubs, and I still uh, now uh, visit uh, two or three clubs uh, the next fall, so the high performance clubs. So I really enjoy doing that. I'm involved as a skill development consultant, so I'm with uh, many camps with the juniors. I'm involved with, uh, because of the, the doubles, doubles team with Davis Cup and Fed Cup, and I'm involved in uh, many, many places that, that, that force me to travel a lot, and, and I really enjoy it. I like to do many different things with uh, adults, male, female, juniors, boy, girls, and uh, with the coaching certification with so many departments, so that's really what challenged me. Okay, so in Canada, my first real experience at the high performance, because I think you're a high performance coach only when you travel with your players. I know some coaches give lessons, and they don't go see their players performing in, in competition, even though or at the national and all this. I think you must go travel with your players. So I started to travel in 89. And I've, I was very fortunate because in the, f the foursome of players I started with was Grant Connell from Vancouver, Glenn Michibata, Chris Britton, and Martin Lerondo. So four guys with great work ethic and very, very committed, very nice on and off court. So that was a great introduction for me to the game. And I worked with them. It went very well with Grant. As you know, he became at one point number one in the world with Glenn Michibata. And then after that, Will Galbraith and with Black. So he was very, very... Uh, good at that level, he, but in singles also, he, we went to 57 in the world, so that that went well, and Glenn Michibara went to 48 in the world in singles, and one in doubles, and Marty and Chris both cracked the 100, so it was a, a great bunch, and because uh, it was successful also, it gives me, as a coach, also confidence to have uh, succeed to bring four players in the top 100 in uh, singles, and uh, and also in doubles, like the, the great success of Glenn and, and Grant was also motivating me to move into the second batch when I became, after that, Davis Cup captain in 1993 for Canada. Then I started to work with Lago, Nestor, and other players. And also we, we know that Lago and Nestor became also top 100 singles players and uh, number one in the world. And it's nice to see at 37 now, Daniel still doing so well, being number one in the world winning Wimbledon second time, so it's it's nice to see. So it was very good uh, to experience all that nice Canadian files and do well. And when I retired from Davis Cup, uh, then I was in a transition where I became manager of Nunzalan Tennis Club. Uh, but after a few years, I realized that my passion was really in coaching. So then I started to coach Israeli, or Lake Ram, also Shahapir. I, I started to work with the other players, not just Canadian. And finally, when I moved to England about four years ago, I started to work with Jimmy Murray and then uh, the LTRB, and since then, uh, really enjoying myself in England. I think uh, one of the reasons I, I help players to move quickly in the ranking when I start to work with them, uh, it's because I see high performance coaching in two ways. If you're a high performer, coach, then you are there to help people to perform. And I tackle right away the performer side of the player and then the tennis side of the player. 
So what is the performer side is the competitive focus athlete. So if a player is not a competitive focus athlete or a simple model that they use in the Spain in Spain, if they don't play with their head, their heart and their legs every time in practice and matches, they're not performers. So I don't care what tactics I will teach them, what technique I will teach them, I will not have a performer, therefore progress will be very slim. So I think I succeed to sell that concept of being a performer and when suddenly they have always an athletic look and then they focus and all this and they, they commit to be a performer, to breathe every time they hit and all this, to have that focus look, uh, progress goes very quickly. Then when I address the tennis player, the tactics and the technique, now everybody knows technique, precede technique. Then I have, I'm a game-based type of coach, so which are the situation, the game situation I will choose. So then I assess the game style of the player and I choose the most frequent patterns that they will have in a match. So for example, for me, I think one of the most important pattern is like uh, in doubles you serve T, and when the players return from the middle, you follow with an angle volley. So if that's very important and very frequent and you need to master that, then I'll be sure that they master the T serve and the angle volley when they come in. So it will not be the down the line volley because in doubles you do very little down the line volleys. So I will just be sure that the, the situation they have to master because they are so frequent, they influence so many points that not that they have it, not that they are good at it, that they master it. So they will develop and maintain it all the time. The road to the so that sense of mastery bring also a lot of confidence in the player. And I think uh, it, the reason of that relative success, because it's always relative what success is, is that, that developing the performer side, then developing a tennis player side very specific to the most frequent situation that they encounter regardless of their level and that brings an overall sense of confidence and belief in the player and then they can actually win more matches.